Hey, welcome back, nerds. Afino here with a guide slash commentary for the Mysterious Heroine X Altar Exhibition Quest. This one fucking sucks. <laughs> it is really rough. Uh, even this year with uh, the game's relative power creep. Odds are you're going to find it a very frustrating fight, but there are some strategies you can use. So the core mechanic here is that Mysterious Heroine X Altar is going to start voring the other enemies on the board. Yeah, because she's really hungry. And your job in a standard run is actually to decide which enemies you can kill, kill them, and um, see which ones you're better off letting MHX Alter absorb. Like right off the bat, you're given a choice between the Snowman and the Golem. The Golem is pretty thick, so there's a good chance you just won't have the resources to kill it. The Snowman you should kill no matter what, because it gives you an arts buff. The Golem though just gives a defense buff to its killer. and. Because you really don't want to attack MHX Alter during this fight, at least during phase one, um, you're better off just letting her bite that bullet. Now here you can see two enemies. One, um, <laughs> the X chromosome over there is worth killing because it'll give you a buster buff. And denying MHX Alter, that is essential to your survival. The uh, crusty Kusamochi, I don't know why you'd eat that, but you know. Echon does what Echon does. It skill seals her, and that's important because the ability she uses to eat enemies is tied to a skill. So having that sealed actually buys you a fair bit of time. And both of these enemies you want to kill. The stupid lizard on the left will give you an attack buff. A multi-turn attack buff. And the gazer increases your NP by 50%. Uh, for MHX Alter, it has a slightly different effect. It gives her three ticks of charge, which is also quite rough. I'd try to avoid that if you can. However, it's not worth burning everything to take these enemies out. Uh, because there are some essential foes coming along soon. And, yeah, the reason why you're trying to kill these enemies in the first place, yes, it is to deny Echon buffs, but that's only half the equation. There is a mechanic in Phase 2 that rewards you for each enemy killed. And you could start Phase 2 anytime you want by <laughs> breaking MHX Alter's bar, but I would... Unless you know exactly what you're doing, I would try to avoid that at all costs. Because when her bar breaks, Echon gains a massive attack buff, massive crit chance buff, and a huge crit damage buff. And she gets accelerated charge. So if you break that bar prematurely, she'll just start wiping your front line. Oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but Echon won't use her eat skill on turns where she's about to NP. Stunned, or otherwise immobilized, or skill sealed. So keep that in mind when trying to figure out how big your window is to actually finish off some of the more troublesome enemies. Now these two enemies is uh, when things get critical. This is a make or break point, and it's also a huge uh, divergence point when it comes to picking your strategy. Now some strategies can opt to kill the Spriggan, while others um, don't. The door on the right pretty much needs to die no matter what. Like, I actually stunned Echon to make sure she wouldn't be able to um, eat either of those enemies. But meeting the DPS requirements for this particular setup is a little tricky. So the door on the right, it gives Echon like a huge crit damage and crit chance buff. The heal doesn't really matter. If you kill it, you get a crit damage buff and a bunch of stars. Yeah, suffice to say, if Echon gets that, you're screwed. The Spriggan actually gives you a negative effect if you um, if you kill it. It sets your max health to 1, which is a disaster. But the reason why I'm trying to kill it is because the effect it gives Echon is even more of a disaster. She will start purging buffs with each normal attack. And she purges them from left to right on your bar. This is a huge problem for a number of stall strats. Now, there are strategies that can opt to just leave the Spriggan alive, because, you know, 600,000 is a lot of health to work through. Now, the buff purge makes it very hard to use servants like Ku to uh, survive in the final turns. But if you're using Bond Heracles, if you have access to Bond Heracles, you can actually afford to let Echon just sit 
on that buff bird because Heracles' Bond CE is a CE effect. No duh. And the benefit of CE effects is that they can't be purged. So no matter what, unless, uh, you know, Etron starts ping-ponging between your remaining allies, Heracles can only die once per turn, once he's, all, like, once he's alone on the board. And this can let you stall out, and stalling out is very important. Way more than the actual damage you deal to Etron herself. And we'll see why once we get to phase two. So here I actually failed to stop her from uh, eating the door. Which is really bad, but with my strategy, making sure that Spriggan dies in a timely manner was important. As for these next two enemies, the book gives a quick effectiveness, whereas the Soul Eater will actually kill whichever one of your allies uh, finishes it off. However, if Echon kills it, um, she just gets a crit chance down. So in most situations, you're better off letting Echon finish it off. However, if you're running an attacker that's just been set to one health, you have the option of sacking them into that Soul Eater just to get an extra kill. Yeah, for my run, I've decided to run Jerker as one of my main attackers. It's a two attacker setup. So if you kill the Spriggan, I would recommend running two attackers. One to actually kill the Spriggan and, you know, just try to survive. And the other to actually continue the fight. For my case, that was Mysterious Heroine Double X. Now, you might think that's a bit of an unfair advantage. But while the defensive class advantage is nice, I found that MHXX actually had trouble meeting some of my DPS requirements on the other enemies. Yeah, I sacked Jalter into the Soul Eater, but thankfully she had her damage CE on because I got her off the friends list. So she's able to tank it out. Her evade skill is actually really good for this fight. Because it triggers once per turn, you can actually end up bypassing a lot of uh, killing blows from MHXA. Yeah, the uh, snowman I killed, it gives arts card effectiveness. As for these two enemies, they're a troublesome pair. So the homunculus, um, if you kill it, you gain health back, but lose defense. But if Echon kills it, she gains a ton of health, but also loses defense. So if you need to, you're better off letting Echon kill it. Over the door. The door is... Yeah, the door works a lot like the previous one. You absolutely want to kill it, because she will start roughing up your team quite badly if you don't. Here, for some insane reason, I decide to... Oh, no, never mind. It worked out. Oh, that's right! <laughs> I got it into my head to kill both of these, and I actually cut out, like, ten attempts where I fucked this up. And had to scum it. But yeah, I opt to kill both, mostly to get... Mostly to gain health back onto, uh... Mysterious Heroine... Double X. I do have to sack Jean for it, which is quite rough, but I'd say it's worthwhile in this situation. So the gazer on the right here will actually restore its killer's health to max, but stun them for two turns. You really want Mysterious Heroine X Alter to eat that if at all possible. Uh, as for the boar, it inflicts a poison that deals 5k damage to you, and it lasts for quite a while, but it gives you a bit of charge. Um, if Echon kills it, she gets poisoned for like 50k a turn, but gains a take of charge. Here, what I cut out was a bunch of attempts of me trying to get George to eat the poison. Um, but I just couldn't get a proper damage combo, so I decided to have Mysterious Heroine Double X take that hit. 
And the reason for that is that the next enemy in line, a hand, will actually remove all debuffs from whoever kills it, but charm them for two turns. I decide to chance it. Uh, the green book gives quick effectiveness. Nothing too important, but it's an easy kill, so you may as well. Yeah, here I missed the damage range, so I opt to reset. Yeah, resetting the app lets you uh, re-roll the turn back to where it was before you picked your command cards. It's quite handy if you're trying to fish for specific damage ranges. Yeah, off for the full buster chain on this one. The quick buff is largely wasted on Jerker, but, you know, it'll do. So as for the final two enemies, one of them is uh, is a dig nose lizard that gives attack. And the weird perverted Ibaraki wannabe over there gives you a multi-turn attack buff, but applies a large burn. 5k a turn. Um, if Echon kills it, she gets an attack buff, but, you know, gets burned for 50k. For my part, I decide to bite the bullet and actually just uh, kill them both. Because Jerker is at 1 health. So I figure shaving a turn off of Echon's second phase mechanics is actually worth it here. A uh, sacking Jerker. But what about that phase two? So in addition to all the damage buffs I talked about earlier, Echon gets a... Uh, gets a buff with 17 turns on it, effectively. And this buff itself doesn't do anything, but it ticks down. But you can make it tick down faster because it counts all of the minions that you killed against those 17 turns. And your reward for going through those 17 stacks is that at the end of that process, she will start taking 2 million damage per turn. And you're gonna need that because her second bar has a colossal 10 million health. Yeah, getting hit with 2 million damage a turn is pretty spicy. Like having Superhuman Orion show up and twerk in your face or something. But that deals a lot of damage. In other words, well worth the price of admission. Once you start phase two, your goal is really just to survive as long as possible and waste her turns. To this end, you're better off running servants that can hold a line for an extended period of time. Uh, if you're doing the double attacker strat, you can use Kukulin. You may have noticed from the star screen that I actually have him equipped with Grudge Match, which does not actually give a damage buff. Uh, I have it on for memes, but it gives a Guts, which can actually help you out here. Um, as it turns out, I probably should have just run Volume in instead, but you know, it was worth a it was worth a laugh. But yeah, because of all the minions I killed earlier, uh, Echon starts ticking down pretty quick. Unfortunately, having both Mysterious Heron Double X and Ku on the board is a little rough. You can't force her turns to prematurely end. But as I decide to go for broke. If you can successfully deal um, more than 2 million damage, you've you effectively shaved off a turn. 
from the amount of time it takes to actually kill that John. Now it's worth noting that the debuff won't actually kill her. It'll just set her at one health. So you will need to survive that extra turn to finish her off. I mentioned this earlier, but if you keep the Spriggan alive, this is the point where you'd want Heracles to come in. If you run Heracles in like a single attacker setup, you can actually do this fight, although I found it pretty frustrating. This double attacker setup actually worked quite a bit better for me. Now, I do run Jean, um, which adds a lot of consistency to this run, but you know, she wasn't around for most of it. And you don't necessarily need double X either. You can run any attacker. If it's an attacker that can, you know, build up their NP quickly, that would be ideal. You know, having the foreigner uh, durability is just a bonus. Although I would not recommend running someone like Hokusai or Abigail. Like Hokusai, you don't want to just AoE everything in sight. Because that'll uh, prematurely set up phase two and terrible things happen. Abigail doesn't have hard mitigation. Like she has her stun, but you don't want to rely on that stun against an NP. So if you're going to run a foreigner, try to run double X. Otherwise, just run an attacker who you think can reliably deal with the various major enemies. A lot of them are Berserkers, so you have a lot of options. The other strat, the big dick strat to this fight, is to run a huge dick buster attacker and just start phase two immediately and crit her down with uh, buster crits. Certain high-end Merlin setups can actually deal the 10 million health in around two turns. It requires a lot of luck. You're really just trading um, Echon crit luck for your own card luck. Here I decided to go for a slow-mo gay ball just to style in her. Bit of BM. But yeah, while high-end Merlin setups can work, they're, they're pretty... Well, you know, they are high-end. Which makes them quite a pain to set up. And there is a fair bit of RNG involved in running them. So unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't try to cheese the fight like that. So, go it slow. You have a couple of approaches you can use. You know, run to attackers, all that. So yeah, with that said, I hope you found this helpful. Like if you liked the video, subscribe for more. And I'll see you next time. Peace!